What's up guys? Today we're gonna to be checking out another pair of subwoofers. This is the Golden Ear XXL. This is Golden Ear's best subwoofer. If I do recall correctly, I reviewed their smaller version a few months back. But this here, this is a pretty big subwoofer. I believe it's 19 inches wide by 17 inches tall by 15 inches in depth. It's got this nice glossy piano black finish with the Golden Ear logo right underneath the lacquer. So if you rub your hand right across it, it's nice and smooth right across there. So that's a pretty nice touch. It's a mirror finish. It's a fingerprint magnet, hence the gloves. It's got a very interesting design as well. So if you look at it from the top, it's not a perfect square. It's got some cornered edges here in the front. But on the top, you can see here behind this grill, this is a 13 inch passive radiator. There's also another one on the bottom. If we take a look here on the bottom, there's a 15 inch one on the bottom as well. So a passive radiator kind of makes it perform almost like a ported subwoofer, except in a sealed enclosure. And on the left and right sides, there's a 12 inch power driver on the left side, on the right side, and on the opposite side, there is another 12 inch driver. So this is a force canceling subwoofer, very much like the KEF subwoofers and the, um, and the Martin Logan Balance 12s, Balance Force 12s. It's also pretty small and dense, very dense. So like trying to move it around is pretty tough. So if we take a look at the back here, we get the LED light for auto on or off. We get the toggle switch for either left or right in, line level in or LFE input. Underneath that is the LFE input. This is the right input. This is the left input. So if we toggle it, it's either left or right and then LFE would be the left side. Then we get a variable crossover from 40 to 150 Hertz. And then this dial here is the subwoofer level. There's no other connections or dials on the back. So it's pretty much straightforward. You will have to use your AVR or receiver or processor to kind of tune this into your main speakers. And the subwoofer is powered by a 1600 watt class D amplifier. Frequency response for this as well is 10 Hertz to 250 Hertz. So I'm definitely gonna wanna test that out to see if it really does go down that low. So let's go ahead. I'm gonna go ahead and get this installed in the home theater and I'll give you some thoughts and impressions. I'm gonna have the sub set up to my Trino of Altitude processor with demos being played back with a Cladescape and as a PD media player. I'm gonna place one sub in the front right corner of my room and the other in the opposite left rear corner. I've also turned off any room correction in the processor and only adjusted levels and delays. The first demo I threw in was the beginning of The Greatest Showman. There's foot stomps at the start that hits like a truck between 40 and 60 hertz. These subs can slap hard. Wow. It's almost like a gunshot and that the subs were super quick to fire with an abrupt start and stop. I didn't hear any sloppiness anywhere in the attack, just a lightning quick fast blast of force energizing my space. These are some of the most tactile subs I've had in here so far. They kind of remind me a little of the Martin Logan Balance Force 212s, only in a way smaller size. Since these boys seem like they can kick, I had to throw in Fury next. This movie bangs between 30 and 40 hertz during the tank battle. Oh man, this is a straight gut shot every time there's machine gun firing or when one of the tanks gets hit by a shell. It's an explosive tactile feeling that gets shot from the subs straight to your body. There's also this slight subtle extension you hear coming after a machine gun shot that slightly wavers in the background. So you get this larger expansive sense of space and depth which pushes the sound stage outwards. You also get to hear this during the quieter moments. What you'll hear and even feel are tanks moving in the background with explosions that seemingly come from miles away. Jerry took him out. So, anti-tank guns, there, there, possibly there, I don't know. I need you to rescue my guys, take the guns out. I can do that. And it clears this road into the town. You push forward, I'll join you there, we'll clear it up. Jerry took him out. So, anti-tank guns, there, there, possibly there, I don't know. I need you to rescue my guys, 
take the guns out. I can do that. And it clears this road in the town. You push forward, I'll join you there. We'll clear it up. With the subs turned off, you don't get that extra sense of depth as the soundstage moves forward. When the subs are on, they pick up that low-level texture that the main speakers can't detect, and this really adds a better sense of immersion to great sounding mixes. Next one we're going to check out is the eyeball scene in Blade Runner 2049. It's got that crazy sustained note around 35Hz. Another one of Denis Villeneuve's films that's probably going to be a go-to is Dune on 4K. The Gam Jabbar scene has this instant blast of bass when the witch uses the voice that resonates super deep, not only through the subs, but in the speakers as well. You dismissed my mother in her own house. Come here. Yeah. Yeah. How dare you use the voice on me? On a lesser quality subs, you might hear some boominess or sloppiness in both these demos. With the Golden Ears, I'd rank it near the top for being smooth, steady, and impressively clean. Not to mention the fast attack during the Dune demo. They both perform effortlessly without breaking a sweat and at scary loud levels. And let's go a bit lower and wrap this up with Edge of Tomorrow. I like this demo because it's only a few seconds long and it reaches down to the infrasonic levels. So yeah, these definitely were knocking it out of the park for everything I threw at it earlier. But as far as bass that blows the hair on your arms in the opposite direction, well these couldn't reach that low. To be fair, not many subs can do this demo justice, and unfortunately the XXLs do finally come up short in this area. Now I did take a few measurements from my main listening seat. The first one is the subwoofer in the front corner. This is fairly flat from 20Hz to 50Hz with a massive dip at 60 The next one is the rear sub. The 60Hz dip is gone, but now I've got a nasty dip at 35. With both subs combined, both dips are gone and I've got extension down to roughly 20Hz before they drop off a cliff. Keep in mind there are no controls to dial in the subs with your main speaker, so there's no phase control or DSP or anything like that. So you will have to rely on your processor or receiver's EQ to get them fine tuned. What I did here in this measurement was invert the polarity on the rear sub and that flattened the whole thing out with a little bump at 65Hz. I could have EQ'd that out, but with just a little simple polarity inversion, you can see how it smoothed everything out. With all four measurement sweeps, the subs played down to 20 hertz before they dropped. Now if you do want to grab any of these subs or any Golden Air product, just visit valueelectronics.com. They're a great partner to the channel and they will give you some great service. So visit the site or give them a ring, just let them know that we sent you. At the time of this video, a single Super Sub XXL is $2,500. This might seem pricey as you can find larger subs for less money, and I've had a few of them in here. In a future iteration, I would like to see some kind of variable phase control or any kind of control to get the subwoofers dialed in for folks that don't like to use EQ or don't have EQ. I'd also like to see an XLR input since there are pre-pros out there nowadays that don't use unbalanced RCA connections. That being said, for its asking price, the XXL has some of the cleanest bass output that I've heard from a sub at any size. It won't give you any meaningful response down below 20 hertz but it'll render textures and soundtracks that a lot of other subs can't do and it does so effortlessly with clean super fast precision it kills it for home theater impact and they're refined for two channel setups as well now i believe these subs came out sometime in 2015 or close to it i know if something isn't broke folks say there's no need to fix it and these subs definitely aren't broke if they just added some fine tuning controls and an xlr input it'd complete the whole package and while they're at it they might as well come out with a 15 or even an 18 inch version that might just make this the perfect sub but as it is these are top tier performers that i think are very hard to beat they play loud and clean and they aren't too big which makes them very easy to fit in a dedicated theater or even a living room if you're in the market for a new subwoofer i'd highly recommend you give the golden ear xxl a listen well, those are my thoughts on the Super Sub XXL. Have you heard them and how do you think they stack up to the competition? Leave a comment down below and let us know. 
As always guys, thanks for watching. If you want, you can follow us on social media. And if you want to support the channel and get exclusive content or great discounts on audio and video gear, then stop by our Patreon page. Like the video if you found it useful and subscribe if you haven't already. And we'll see you again in the next video.